question of, of um, hypertension, uh, we uh, first made out that the, the patient has no drop, actually rise in, in uh, blood pressure, and that's normal in a, in a person. And that's no, that also, I, if his blood pressure would be 210 and risen to 225, that would show his essential hypertension. Now, if on the other hand his blood pressure fell, then his mechanism for control of blood pressure is disturbed by something. Now, I'll take uh, pheochromocytoma as a good example. Pheochromocytoma, more than 50% of the patients do not have intermittent hypertension, they have persistent hypertension. But whether they have persistent hypertension or intermittent, they will have some tachycardia. That's the first point. <clears throat> and uh, the second point is that because they are in a state of chronic vasoconstriction from the, from the noradrenaline, they cannot further increase their adrenaline output. They're already maximally stimulated. So when they stand up, the only thing that can happen is their blood pressure will fall. And also, because they are chronically hypovolemic, their blood vessels are always uh, day and night have been in vasoconstriction, meaning their vascular bed is restricted, is small, and they have no reserve to make the blood pressure go up when they stand. So 70% of patients with pheochromocytoma will have orthostatic hypotension, and that may be one of their symptoms. <clears throat> the same would be true of Cushing's disease. Now, Cushing's disease is, is uh, very easy to diagnose. You can spend a lot of money doing a lot of tests. But the simple thing to do is, does the patient look like they have Cushing disease? Now, we know what Cushing disease looks like because we've all seen patients who are on steroids, and we know the round face, and we know the, the bruising they get, and, and the sore back, and all those things. Those are all signs. But the point about it is that there are a lot of fat people around who have round faces. So you need to know what did they look like in a photograph five years ago. And if you see that their face is round five years ago, that is not Cushing disease. Cushing disease doesn't take long to develop abnormal features. If you have a patient on high dose steroids, in a couple of months, you can already notice the round face and, and the, the signs of, of uh, hypercortism. So just to look at the old photograph, uh, five years or more, will say this is a chronic process, therefore it's not Cushing's, because Cushing's is a subacute process. And uh, so that uh, solves that problem. But you should suspect Cushing's if you see a person with a sore back, younger age group than the usual patient who has hypertension, and they have orthostatic hypotension because their blood volume is increased by the aldosterone, and the, the other features have come on very acutely. So that tells you this Cushing disease. Polycystic disease of the kidney, you can feel the kidneys usually if the patient is not obese. And uh, they have a hereditary situation. So mother or father, somebody had this. And uh, the patients seldom are able to pass beyond age 40. After that, they die of uremia. <clears throat> and they have hematuria from time to time. They have a tendency to renal calculi. And so they are easy to, to recognize, too. <clears throat> and uh, now we come to the last condition that I'm um, interested in, and that is, uh, uh, does the patient have renal artery stenosis? There are two kinds of renal artery stenosis. One occurs in younger people, uh, usually uh, around age 30, and uh, what they have is what's called dysplasia. 
and this is a long, not a single, not not a single uh, plaque like in atherosclerosis, but a diffuse thing, and it's bilateral, and <clears throat> they they will present uh, at a younger age, and uh, if they're not diagnosed, and of course they may live a longer time, and you may find them, and uh, they're quite old. It doesn't mean because they're old that they don't have it. It means if they're young and they have it, then that's dysplasia. <clears throat> then the other kind is uh, probably more common. That's where atheromatous plaque in one kidney, one renal artery, or in the other, or in both renal arteries. And this will, will make a brewery, which is uh, typically has a short diastolic component to it. It's high-pitched and it's heard uh, just above the umbilicus and just near the midline and you check on both sides. The patient should be lying flat, otherwise uh, the sitting up the brewery will probably disappear. Well, I can hear it, but I don't think that'll pick it up. You might like to hear it. It's very soft. It depends. Do you hear it? Okay. Now, I'll show you how there's an orthostatic drop. <clears throat> It's 150 over 70, and I've been taking medic medication. One forty over fifty-five. So that shows you that I do not have oh, I do not have uh, essential hypertension. I have uh, something in the other category, which could be one of those things that I listed. <clears throat> okay, now the last thing is that I'm also on a beta blocker, and I'll, if I had a pheochromocytoma, I would have a tachycardia. So I'm just going to check my pulse. So my pulse is 48. So that rules out pheochromocytoma. And uh, it tells me that, that uh, probably I'm on a beta blocker, which is what I am, you see? I'm on a beta blocker. Okay. So there you've got quite a lot of information. Now the next thing is, you decide, uh, has have, has he had a myocardial infarction? Yes, I have had it. So, and the other thing is, uh, am I in heart failure? No, I'm not in heart failure. And uh, then the next thing is, what is the next test? And that is a captopril test for this. And uh, then they measure the renin suppression of that. Okay? And uh, then you, they operate after that, and we're doing an angiogram. So that's the stage I'm at. Okay.